Now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. And I'm joined today with astrophysicist Jeff Zwaring. Thank you for joining us. Sandra, thanks for the invitation. We're going to be talking about teeny tiny particles. You betcha. Yeah, you know, I saw this article um, in Apple News, and I was really intrigued by it. And so, of course, I sent it off to you right away and wanted to know, hey, can we talk about it? Um, and it is a, it featured a video with Neil deGrasse Tyson where he explains that a tiny particle could expand our understanding of the natural world. So what? What, <laughs> what is this discovery? <laughs> well, okay, so the discovery, it's actually been a re... re doing of an experiment that was done about 20 years ago. And the, the mundane explanation is we're measuring this particular quantity mm -hmm. and we can calculate this particular quantity out to five, six, seven, eight, nine places of the decimal, mm -hmm. and they don't agree. What we expect mm -hmm. from our calculations and what we measure in the lab don't line up. And mm -hmm. so uh, why that's a big deal is that we have this thing called the standard model in particle physics. It's got electrons and protons and quarks and gluons, and mm -hmm. it, it explains all of the fundamental interactions that we see, gravity, electromagnetism, mm -hmm. strong and weak nuclear force, all that's included in there. It's all the particles that we see, and it explains almost all the data that we have out there. Right. And so we've got a calculation from that model that doesn't line up with what we measure. And so that's the exciting part, because if that's a genuine discrepancy, mm -hmm. it says there's some new physics out there that we don't know about. And so it's a way to say, hey, let's go look for this new physics. That's what's really exciting right. about it. That's a lot to unpack. So first, <laughs> first let's go to um, one thing that you said is if that calculation is correct. So is there agreement yet, or is there further study on that calculation? Well, they're very complex calculations, mm -hmm. and so a lot of people have done them. I mean, there's been a lot of people who have worked mm -hmm. at that, but that's the way science often works, is that you say, okay, you make these calculations, and they predict this, and so there, obviously there was some level of confidence in the right. calculation in the first place. You go out, you make the measurement, mm -hmm. and you get that, and then when they disagree, you gotta figure out, is that a experiment error? Is that a calculation error? Or is it a genuine discrepancy? Mm -hmm. And so um, there's pretty good confidence in the calculation, mm -hmm. but it may not be correct. Again, there's a lot that goes into this, and we could be missing something, so. Yeah, so now, assuming though that the calculation is correct, mm -hmm. so let's move from there then. If it's correct, then we have kind of like this new kid in town, right, who comes in and shakes things up. What does that mean when you said that we might have a new, like, physics? Well, okay, so in the standard model, there are some number of particles. There's mm -hmm. quarks, there's gluons, there's, there's, uh, there's things that govern the forces, there's particles that get acted on by these forces, and we've got a, a complete, in the standard model, there's a complete inventory of those. Mm -hmm. Well, if we make all the calculations based on the standard model, that's the discrepancy with the measurement. That means that there's probably another particle out there that we mm -hmm. don't know of, which is a really exciting right. thing. So now, how do we go figure out what that particle is? What does it look like? What are its characteristics? So it's, it's uh, you know, if you could liken it, you know, we've been searching for dark matter. We know right. it's out there. We've measured the gravitational effects of it for the last 80 years. Mm -hmm. We think there's a particle that does that, but we don't know what the particle is. So there's been a lot of effort trying to figure out what the particle is. That's kind of what would happen here. There's another particle out there. Let's go figure out what it is. What is the name of the particle, by the way? Well, the one that they're doing the experiment mm -hmm. on is called a muon. So okay. uh, you're familiar with electrons, and that's the mm -hmm. one that's more common. Every, an electron has two, two heavier cousins. One's a muon, and one is a, uh, uh, called a tauon. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're doing the muon, they're, it, it has this thing that acts like spin. It's not mm -hmm. actually spin. And so when you run it around in a magnetic field, it behaves a certain way, mm -hmm. and that's the discrepancy in the measurement. Mm -hmm. What we expect, or what we measured, it does with this spin, and what we mm -hmm. calculate it does with this spin doesn't line up. So then from a Christian perspective, is this like point one for the Christians or like, I mean, not that we're like wanting to do <laughs> verses, but you know, when we get new information, we think, okay, how does, the, does this easily align with the Christian faith? Does it seem to challenge it? So how would you view that? Well, the, the way I would view it is this, mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, as a Christian, I believe that God's revealed himself in scripture mm -hmm. and that as we study that revelation, we are going to better understand it over time, but we will never plumb the depths of all that it has to say. Mm -hmm. God has also revealed himself in creation. 
physical world. So as we understand the universe, we're going to understand more and more of how it works, but we're never going to plumb the depths mm -hmm. of what that is. This to me is a sign that says, okay, we've got a pretty good understanding and now there's more to explore. Right. And so it helps us probe deeper and get deeper into that mm -hmm. stuff that's there. And my expectation is once we figure out, let's, let's assume this is a real discrepancy and we figure out what the cause and everything, that's going to open up new problems that we didn't even know to explore. Right. So it just gives us an opportunity to explore deeper and deeper and deeper and understand. And if God is who he says he is, we're never going to exhaust what there is to understand. And that's that's exciting. Yeah. Oh, I love your energy. I love that you're like super excited because um, that's great because then it encourages exploration mm -hmm. with uh, confidence and with ease, you know? To Absolutely. Not, not yeah. You know, I mean, if, if I... That was a groundbreaking recognition for me, mm -hmm. believe it or not, was the recognition that if God is who he says he is, how he's revealed himself right. in scripture and how he's revealed himself in creation will never disagree. And where I find disagreement, it just means I've done something wrong and I need to explore deeper. Well, right. kind of what's going on here. We've said, we thought we understand the, understood the theory and it says this, we made a measurement and it says this. We don't just throw our hands up and say, oh, well, science is just right. bad. Oh no, this is a sign into something deeper. Right. Let's explore that and figure out what yeah. it's telling us. And it's kind of amazing to think that there might be even like today, as we, we know that the scientific, uh, you know, discovery has been going on for centuries, mm -hmm. that there's still more to explore about our Earth and mm -hmm. also our universe and beyond. That's, that's pretty amazing. Absolutely. I mean, we think we know a lot. We right. actually do know a lot. Right. I don't want to minimize that. Right, right, right. But there's a whole lot that we just kind of know on the surface we don't really understand, right. even though we can put the math behind it. So it, it, I, I think this is what we're going to be doing in heaven for eternity, is just exploring God, understanding who he is, exploring his creation. Mm. And we're going to do it without getting tired or frustrated. And we're just going to keep learning and growing. And that's going to be fascinating. Yeah. Well, where can people go to find more information? Uh, if you want to go find out about the experiment itself, it's the Muon G2 experiment. So That's just M -U -O -N. look. M-U-O-N. M-U-O-N G-2. Uh, you'll get links to Fermilab, which did the experiment yeah. recently. Um, also, just go to reasons.org, figure out how science and the Christian faith work together. Not anything specific about that experiment, but how to look at scientific discoveries in general. Well, thank you so much for that, Jeff. And if you want to hear more from Jeff, go to reasons.org and search for his blog, Impact Events.